Tel Aviv, or rather Tel Aviv Yafo, biggest city in Israel, created in 1909 on the outskirts of the ancient port of Jaffa, city that never sleeps, and the party capital of the Middle East are the nicknames of it. Let's dive into its streets to see what it can offer for travelers. We start with a walk on the city beaches, that are stretching on more than 10 kilometers of shoreline, where everyone will find something for themselves. Starting with sunbathing possibly whole year long, temperature in the winter drops to 18 degrees in January, so it's still pretty nice, at least for Central Europeans like us. Other options include swimming, surfing, or even flying. Also doing many other sport activities or just walking and admiring beautiful sunsets. There are also hundreds of bars and restaurants, so you'll always be able to extinguish your hunger or thirst. But let's jump inside of the city to Shuk HaKarmel, Carmel Market. Streets with dozens of small stands with handicraft, different types of art and other things I can't even name. Long alleys with food stands with everything you can imagine. Local sweets, typical for hot countries, made mostly from juices, sugar and nuts. Dozens of halva types that match every palette. Tasty fruits and juices, vegetables and colorful spices. And around it, many restaurants and bars, where on Friday people party from early hours. Thing that I need to mention is that the city is full of street art. You can't miss it. It's on every street and corner, and it is really making nice cooperation, especially with older buildings. If you like street art, you could go through the city for many hours, and you will not get bored. One of the more noticeable creations are paintings of a girl and a fox by Julia Stengelov, nicknamed Imaginary Duck. They are all over the city, easily distinguishable from the other types. With style based on just few colors, they are definitely eye-catching. And for us, it was pretty fun to find more and more of them. But while walking around, we couldn't miss how the city looked. From one perspective, there are plenty of modern and nice buildings, clean streets, but just next to them, there is a plenty of dirt, falling apart old constructions, and places that we would prefer to avoid in the night. Let's get back to the nice things, exactly to the city's historical birthplace, the ancient port of Jaffa. We took our first steps there in Jaffa Flea Market. If you are a fan of old trinkets or art, or just want to get some strange souvenir, it's a place for you. Bunch of streets with plenty of stands full of colorful things asking to be bought. But there are also plenty of places to buy clothes or other accessories. And if you get tired from it, you can get a rest in a dozens of cafes, bars and restaurants just outside of the market. We definitely recommend you to try local craft beer in Beer Bazaar Jaffa. We love craft beers, so the possibility of checking a Tel Aviv beer scene was a must-do for us. And we were not disappointed. You can choose from many different flavors or even get a beer roulette with a bunch of shot glasses to try and the waiter will explain to you every beer that you have been served. Moving forward, let's talk about history. City creation dates back to 17th century before current era. It is mentioned in the conquest of ancient Egypt. One of the tales says that Egyptian used in 1440 BCE trick. Soldiers were in the sacks carried by animals and given as gifts to the city. So similar to the conquest of Troja, but it has happened 200 years before it. Typically, during the ages the city had many rulers, Philistines, Israelis, Romans, Arabs, Crusaders, Ottomans, French, British and many others. 
In the beginning of 20th century, the city was a big melting pot between Jews and Arabs, and it caused multiple bloodsheds. But even today, nearly 40% of inhabitants are Arabs. During the times after Israeli independence, Arab ancestry of the city was neglected. But after 1990s, it has become more important, and many historic landmarks were restored. Today we can see plenty of 18th to 20th century buildings, like St. Peter's Church on Kikark Tumim Square, or the clock tower on the entry to the old town, or even 16th century buildings like Mahmoudiyah Mosque or Al Bar Mosque. Jaffa is not only a historical point, but also a still alive community, which can be seen on the seaside. Starting with a port and a fish market next to it. Not a very big one, but definitely a good place to buy a fresh local fish or other types of seafood directly from fishermen. And finishing at the Jaffa seafront, where you can go to one of the many restaurants or just chill listening to local artists looking at old buildings just next to the sea or boats entering and leaving harbor. Thanks for watching! Tell us in the comments what do you think and see you on the next travel destination.